Happy holidays, guys. Welcome back to the Pyramid Inn. What's going on, my nomads? Party people and strangers everywhere across the internet. Your boy V wants to close out the year with one final review before we just unpack some more stuff in the 2020s. So let's talk about the return to 2D animation with cell animation of Klaus. Okay, firstly, before we begin this review, Guys, if you're reaching the age where you have to fully shave, don't endorse ever getting a five o'clock shadow in the middle of like one of your most emotional breakdowns in the world. It's not fun. Now back to the point at hand. Klaus as a film is probably one of the best holiday movies that also invents its mythology in real world contexts. Allow me to explain. So if you guys haven't seen the movie Klaus yet, I'm not going to go into too many spoiler territories about what's going to happen. But the story is centered around a mailman that was chosen by his dad because he's a spoiled brat. We all know the storyline by now. Where he's sent off to this very desolate island that has these two feuding tribes of people. Think the Hatfields and the McCoys, if you will. And in this entire spread, he's told that he has to deliver a certain amount of letters back to the mainland in order to finally leave the island, but he only has one year's time. So he tries to do as many different actions as he can to make sure that he gets all these people to buy up as many different stamps and letters and mail off all this sort of stuff so that he can deliver everything on time so he can go back to his posh, rich lifestyle. However, he doesn't get anywhere until he runs into this mysterious woodsman that the world only knows as Klaus, a toy maker that has secluded himself into the forest away from the main part of the island. As such, when the woodsman finds this one letter that was in the mailman's bag, Klaus then finds the mailman, and by happenstance, the two form an unlikely partnership that then develops into the mythology that is Santa Claus for the young audience. Honestly, this movie is probably both a good thing for the 2D community, for people that want to do independent structures that then get funded out the ass to then get as far up the chain as possible and tell a good enough story but also its worst enemy in a few different regards that we'll get into in a minute. First, the positives. The positives about this being a cell-drawn slash fully animated by hand film does not go underappreciated. It's probably one of the most beautiful movies that we have seen in the decade, by hand nonetheless. Everything that has been enacted by this film feels so sublime. Yeah, I gave an Italian chef kiss that it's so beautiful that you also have to then call up your kids and be like, hey guys, um, you guys want to go to Iceland? No, I'm not crying. And then just go about your business because then everyone just looks at you weird about what the fuck just happened here. And then it also has certain moments where you get character development from certain characters that you didn't really notice the first time around about how good their storyline can be when you get the context for what's happening. Like a school teacher that really gave up on their dream because of what the whole island's environment was. How the mailman obviously grows from a pompous dick into someone that actually cares about stuff. Klaus's character development from just being a seclusive person to then realizing his secret dream that I'm not going to get into because of spoiler reasons. And if you guys are going to go in the comments section after watching this being like, what secret dream are you talking about? Don't worry about it. So, with all that stuff, and even some great animation sequences that really show off that 2D animation is not dead, guys, do not be fooled by the 3D market or by anyone with the CG market. 2D animation still has a place in the world. We just need to actually incorporate that more instead of pulling a Berserk 2017-2018 adaptation. That is the positives. However, here come the negatives. Now, as someone that is closer more to 30 than he's ever been in his life, I am obviously not the target demographic for this film. It's indeed targeted for children because of certain slapstick jokes of, ha ha ha, man, he set his butt on fire. <laughs> I'm over here just like, why do I have Home Alone flashbacks of Joe Pesci getting his skull set on fire? And then us laughing as 
deluded children about what is the consequence of death. It also has some certain weird moments like if it's a kid's film, why all of a sudden do we have these people just strolling out with dead bodies just in casket-like bags to go off somewhere? And I know the rating is PG, but trust me, PG doesn't mean anything anymore. Remember back in the day when PG meant something? Look at Wizards, for example. All of this stuff and more just kind of gives off this weird notion about how its tonal problems don't really seem like that of the tar target demographic of the new era of the woke community because everyone wants it to be a political correct statement about how you go about things instead of how it's more reminiscent to a 80s 90s and 2000s type of film where you had more leeway to do something without the whole woke culture trying to be like it's a little bit too messed up for the kids if you imply that people get murdered here or about how people be knocking boots and all this sort of stuff and even about Certain spoiler territories I'm not going to go into because we ain't going to go there. And the last thing about this whole tribal thing. Guys, I don't know if you know how squiggy that feels right now in 2019. If you live in North America where you have these two factions that would rather kill the other side than ever have them intermingle. It kind of gives off a weird hint about this feels oddly similar. To something that's happening in the world and I don't really want to go about things because then it just becomes weird and before you guys start going on about how you're just reading too much into things guys remember we also still live in a time and place where you get prejudiced for uh, not really pre you get attacked on a social like environment by prejudice people for like the stupidest things like if you have a mental disorder you get mm, a lot of prejudice thrown your way if you're a certain sexual orientation you get prejudice thrown your way it's not just a skin tone thing gentrification goes for a lot of things besides just your skin complexion class what your orientation is, how you conduct yourself in the world. All of these things are what gentrification really does follow through, through for everything to make what is the darker side of society. And that part really does rub me the wrong way whenever I see stuff of a classist divide about what these two factions want to do for themselves in a kid's film that's supposed to try and embrace the holiday, as it were, but at the beginning of it just being like, we can make sure we get through all of this discrimination by believing in a person that gives our kids toys. Because that breeds a lot of things, along with lying about his mythology to make kids just do the right things for selfish reasons. That's the only way that we will find true happiness in the world. It's a very twisted message when you kind of break it down for kids. I do not apologize. But I will be fair for the holidays because what was made for this film stands on the whole entire precipice about what you want for a holiday film. An escapist reality to where you can make anything better if you do the right thing, if you stand for the right principles, if you do the right actions, then everything else becomes a pristine measure towards a more beautiful ending for everybody. Everyone gets the grand prize, everyone gets the love interest, everyone walks away happy, there's magic around. That's what you want in a holiday film and the makings of how to make Santa Claus for every single child in the world for a mythology story that not a lot of people explore now because we've been just spoiled by Rankin Bass and various other mediums about old Saint Nicholas. That's just one of the beautiful notes that Klaus has done for the world in 2019 that not a lot of films have done, even if I've heard good things about Frozen 2, but I still refuse to watch the first one. Needless to say, though, let's just get on with things and go into the rating system where I will be awarding this film a 10.3 out of 13 with a B- minus and giving it 4.5 stars out of 7. And with that, guys, that is my final video that is set for the 2020s. I would have loved to give you guys more material, but, um... 
you guys are gonna be seeing a video about why I haven't been around as much in January. So, um, till then, guys, enjoy the holidays. Have a Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Winter Solstice, like your boy. Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Festivas. Have a wonderful New Year's, all of those wonderful holidays and more. You guys enjoy that to the fullest because you have earned it. Take care, guys, and give a nice chef kiss to the film. Mwah. It's been a nice good old after hours review sesh. Boy, you crazy! <laughs>